I'm Georgia Woods and welcome to Go Fly Online. Today we're going to be looking at how to operate a radio and intercom. Let's go flying! It is important to have a thorough understanding of both your aircraft's radio and intercom system. A lot of radio issues are unfortunately caused by human error. Common errors include the pilot not selecting the volume correctly on the radio or intercom, or simply incorrect input within the pilot's headsets. After you have pre-flighted the aircraft, it is important to make sure that both the pilot and instructors or passenger headsets firstly have enough charge if they are noise attenuating, like these Bose headsets, and make sure you have a backup battery on you. Here we have a standard radio with an intercom system. The radio we use for communicating to other aircraft and air traffic control if you are in controlled airspace, and the intercom is used to communicate between the pilot and passenger or pilot and instructor. While radio and intercom brands vary, their basic operation is usually the same. Let's look at this Garmin radio as an example. We have an on and off and volume knob. We also have a frequency selector knob and an active switch that switches the frequency from active to standby. Some radios also have a monitor button that allows you to monitor two frequencies at the same time. We will not go into any detail with these other buttons, however on most radios, the other buttons are used to program the radio in more detail and set pre-selected frequencies. Today at Caloundra we will use the frequencies 125.85 for our CTAF radio frequency and 129.0 as our backup frequency for Brisbane Centre. The intercom system generally has a volume control, a squelch control and an isolate switch. The isolate switch allows the pilot to isolate or mute the passenger seat. It is important to know that both the volume and squelch control are independent of the radio. The volume simply controls the volume between the pilot and passenger, or pilot and instructor. Most radios have a squelch control, and all intercoms also have a squelch control. So what is squelch? Squelch control on a radio is used to filter out any background carrier wave information or background radio noise. Squelch on an intercom is used to determine the sensitivity of the amount of noise the microphones in the headsets receive. Basically, if the squelch is fully open, they will pick up and receive all the sound signals that the microphone is receiving. However, the squelch can be adjusted so that it will only pick up the pilot and passenger or instructor's voice and filter out the other background noise. We have just completed our run-up checks, we have selected our correct frequencies and it's important at this point to make sure that the intercom is working correctly so that you can communicate effectively with the passenger or instructor. You then should do a radio check to make sure that the radio is working, is clear and you can both receive and transmit signals. To do this we just make a general broadcast on the CTAF. Calandra Traffic, Sling 1675 requesting a radio check. Someone should respond with a reading between 1 and 5, 1 being totally unreadable and 5 being perfectly clear. A 3 is marginal and anything under reading a 3, you should consider cancelling the flight and getting the radio looked at by an engineer. To change the radio frequency, simply turn the frequency knob here. This changes the standby frequency, then you can select this button to change it to active. The intercom may need to be adjusted once airborne. For instance, it could be louder when airborne, so you need to adjust the volume on the intercom. However, often the squelch will need to be adjusted in the air. Let's look at how the squelch works. Right now, I am talking through my headset and there is no background noise. What I am hearing through my earpiece is the same as what the passenger or instructor should be able to hear. If I open the squelch to full, we can now hear a lot of background static noise and it's very hard to communicate. So, I need to ease the squelch a little bit. However, if I go too far the other way, I will end up not only cutting out the background noise, but my own voice as well. We can also see the isolate switch. Remember when I switch this to isolate, I can transmit, but the passenger or instructor will not be able to talk to me or make a radio call. It is important to note that the common user error in radio and intercom issues are incorrect volume or squelch settings or the improper use of the isolate button. If you are having issues with the radio, the easiest way is to trouble check the volume and squelch controls on both the radio and intercom. Confirm the isolate switches off and ensure you are on the correct frequency. For more information on your radio or intercom system, consult the manual for these devices for your particular aircraft or consult your flying instructor. 
Thanks for joining us today. If you like our videos, subscribe to our GoFly Online or our YouTube channel. Happy and safe flying and see you next time on GoFly Online.